Okay, that's day 225 out of the way. Not a long one. I'm waiting for my new True Motion trainers to arrive. And I thought they'd be here today, but they're not. It's Bank Holiday Monday, so hopefully they'll be here tomorrow at some point, and then I'll probably do another five mile run tomorrow, and then do a 25, whatever, four hour 25 mile run um, on Wednesday or Thursday. But this is the uh, food fuel that I'm going to be using. It's called Supernatural Fuel. It comes in a few flavours. This is uh, dates and sesame, which I think is the highest carbohydrate content, about 25%. This is berry and canola, which is around, um, I believe this is the lowest which is 14.3, but it tastes really good. And this one is oats, banana, and maple syrup, which is also 14.1. So those two are quite low, but this one, the dates and sesame, nearly 24. And there is one other flavor, which I don't have, and I can't remember, but that's also in the 20s, I believe. Um, and it got me through the ultra marathon along the Jurassic Coast. Did some superb stuff. I never ate anything other than I had a I had two dates and about six of those. So this is what I'm going to be fueling myself on on the 63 mile 110k ultra, which is fast approaching than one, which is causing me to lose sleep. <laughs> But I'm eating super healthy. Uh, I probably should go to bed earlier. I'm working pretty hard. Um, not as much work as I'd like from a financial point of view. But when I am working, it's physical work. Um, so a couple of times a week, gym. So, But I'm there, I'm, I'm eating good food. Um, I need, I've got basically four weeks. So I need to get, I need to get, two marathons in, training marathons in distance wise in the next, um, yeah, in the next couple of weeks. And then just short runs um, until until I head up on the 20, 28th of September and the race is on the 30th. So, but I highly, companies based in Devon, Supernatural Fuel, um, it's absolutely superb. And these, you send back to them, when you buy them, they send you an envelope you pop them back in, send it to them, and they recycle the packaging. Um, I didn't touch one. No, I had two. I had two little gummy bear sweets in one of the aid stations. That was it. I just re refueled, uh, refilled my bottles, put my own carbohydrate mix in the bottles, you know, the sort of running fuel, the electrolytes. And never touched anything. People were guzzling down croissants, sandwiches, and all sorts of stuff, but I never touched any of it. So this works. Um, it's, like I said, 63 miles, 110k. It's a long way. And it's not flat, obviously. It's the Lake District. I've been looking at the route on um, Google Maps, Google Earth. Um, God knows how my knee is going to handle this. I have no idea. We'll only find out on the day. But, you know, 225 days into running. And apart from one or two tiny nibbles that really didn't stop me training, thank God. Um, it's all right. Uh, and I ran the day after the 36-mile ultramarathon. I did, I did five miles the following day. Um, and the knee was fine. So touch wood, um, I come out of this 63 mile slog through the Lake District with with my knee intact. Um, I know it's going to dictate my pace if I um, if I try to, the cutoff time is 25 hours, 
so I've, I've got to finish within 25 hours and I will do that but how fast I finish will depend on how my knee feels and if it starts to to aggravate me or I think something's gonna go then I have to really slow down to the point where I know I'll finish um, if I have to walk if my knee gives up and I have to walk I will finish the course but you know of course if I finish outside of the 25 hours it doesn't count but I need to because it gives me three three points three or four qualifying points for the UTMB the Ultra Trail de Mont Blanc which I'm hoping to get into in two years time Hopefully I'll still be running in two years, I'll still be alive. My lungs or my knee won't have packed up, but uh, no, I feel good. I must admit, I've, I've never felt healthier. 61 in November, and I feel super fit at the moment. I'm out riding my bike a couple of times a week, gym a couple of times a week, and of course running every day. And like I said, sadly work is a little bit thin on the ground at the moment, but... Um, Yeah, it's, uh, I'm just trying to picture myself on that course about 25, 30 miles in and then looking up and seeing some whopping great big hill. It's not marked either. Um, you need a GPX file on your watch. So of course I've got my Garmin Phoenix watch, which has got the map on it. Um, but I've also have it on, a, on the phone as well as a backup. Uh, in case the battery goes, it will be fully charged and it should easily last three or four days using the GPS, but um, you never know. And if the trail is not marked, you certainly don't want to be going off course up there. Um, you know, the end of September, the nights are drawing in pretty quick, um, especially that far north. So I'll be taking two head torches with new batteries in each. Um, obviously the phone will be fully charged and switched off. So that's got a light on it as well. Um, there's seven aid stations on the whole 63 mile route. So I'm not sure what, what the distances are yet, but I will be carrying two, two bottles with me here on my, on my running vest. And of course these, um, and maybe some little waffles, um, some snack waffles that are made for runners. Um, we'll see. Do I look worried? <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit anxious. I've, I've never run this distance before. Um, I didn't run a marathon. I ran a half marathon and then skipped the marathon and went straight to a 36 mile ultra marathon which probably wasn't the best idea in the world but because I had trained solidly and I've kept myself super fit and I do eat you can't eat any healthier than I eat truth be known so why not it worked I finished the 36 miles in eight hours and 20 minutes um, and I could have, I could have, in all honesty, I could have run faster, but I had to, I had to think about my knee. Um, I hate to bang on about it, but I, I really am. It's, it's my Achilles heel, no pun intended. Um, it's, for me, it's just all about longevity. It's not about personal bests or beating anybody else because of my knee, because it's had so many operations. I cannot afford to push it to just try and beat a certain time um, because the consequences I don't even want to think about it I cannot have any more surgery certainly not mate I've got enough scar tissue I can't I can't get my I can't get my heel to touch the you know the lower part of my glute like I can on my, my right leg it can go right back I'm very flexible for my age and my size but I've just simply got a knee that locks because of all the scar tissue inside. It's, it's pretty badly, it's pretty ugly. Um, and the swelling will never go down. Um, it's been like that since 1993 and there's nothing I can do about it. I, I went to see a specialist, a couple of specialists, and they just said, it's not worth it. It's not worth the hassle of digging in there again.
to try and clear away stuff because the chances of it working are just not are not worth the risk so that's what I'm going to live with so anyway that's the end of that little I can't wait for my new running shoes to arrive they've got some pretty good write-ups um, I haven't tried them on um, I did go into a friend's shop but they didn't have my size he's got a running shop but uh, I will get them on and run five miles just to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do and then um, then we'll, we'll do a sort of four hours or 25 miles whatever comes first at a nice slow pace like I said it's not about speed or personal best for me it can't be I'm, I'm way past that so anyway now it's sofa book and bed <laughs>